A man's been stalking me for the last 10 years. The first time I met him I was 6. I used to call it the only time I've met him. And oh how I wish that were still true. I'm sure that I was 6 because my green birthday balloon still had enough helium to sag at the same level of my midget tall head. And I hadn't grown tired of dragging it like an enslaved puppy everywhere I went. Into McDonald's. Yup. At the park. Chick. To the urinal. Like I said, everywhere. Mom was inside the gas station scrounging around for a semi-healthy lunch. And Dad was at the bathrooms. It was probably a bit irresponsible of them to leave me alone, but we lived on the road at this time. And I'm sure they needed breaks. So, after pestering them for hours in my car seat, they assigned me the most important, life-threatening job of all, supervising the gas nozzle. Parents can have an awfully twisted sense of humor. Both sets of numbers on the filling station screen word steadily upwards. The top about twice as fast as the bottom. I was distracted formulating my own brilliant hypothesis on what they could mean when someone spoke. They're handing out licenses younger and younger these days. It wasn't a voice I'd heard before. But there are plenty of new voices in my life. At restaurants, in grocery stores, at gas stations like this one. A big grown-up wiped his oil-stained hands on his oil-stained jeans near the front of our Dodge minivan. I'm only six, I said. Dad says I've gotta know how to read all the signs before he'll let me drive. Only six. Not six and a half. Not six and three quarters. I tugged my green balloon up and down, considering. Six and, and a little more. Well Mr. Six and a little more. You must be nearly grown up if you're filling up the car all by yourself. Your parents must trust you. I puffed out my chest. I can swipe the money card all by myself too and turn on the radio. When he didn't seem proud of my many painstaking accomplishments, I added, and I can wipe the windows. A feat to be truly proud of. The road needs more young travelers like you. Between us. The gas nozzle clicked to a stop. Dad had told me not to take it out. But I was six now. I grabbed it with both hands like I'd seen him do and yanked. A line of gas trickled out, but the station didn't explode. The world didn't end. I proudly lowered the nozzle to the ground by the tube and let it rest there. Looked about right. Did you finish filling up your car? I asked, realizing for the first time that ours was the only one in the lot. I'm here more for business. The worker. My insides lit up. Do you know where the helium is? Helium. The one to put in the car wheels. My balloon needs more. Ah. That helium. A smile pressed his lips. The adult type that I never understood. Shall we go find it together? He held out a hand for mine, and for the first time. I hesitated. Your balloon, he clarified. Oh. I handed it to him and followed behind. He was, after all, a grown-up. The day was sunny and bright and the distant mountains rose up like smiling giants. I wanted to grab a handful of dandelions and run through their spinning seeds. But I followed dutifully behind the friendly cashier man. Maybe I could always refill my birthday balloon like this. Maybe I could keep it with me in the car forever. We circled to the back of the gas station. Away from the large front windows. Away from the few disinterested customers, just us two. Alone. There was a single car waiting in the shadows. A smallish blue one I decided, and beside it was. A helium. I skipped towards the humming metal machine and knocked it with my fist. A tinny ringing answered back. Good eyes, he said. I'll show you how to fill it up, but first a magic trick. I nodded vigorously. And my thoughts of the air pump flitted momentarily away. He waved me towards him. First I tie this here, he said, wrapping the balloon cord through the door handle of the car. Is this yours? In a way. Now give me your hand. I need it for the magic. I watched, fascinated, as he wound the nylon line around my own wrist. Then the handle once again. Then my wrist. I felt a giddy grin spread across my face. What would the trick be? And do you want to drive a car like this when you're older? He asked. Maybe. 
but maybe a bigger one. He laughed and continued to wind. Oh, the car doesn't matter. You could have anyone you want. Big, long, red, green, would you like that? A green car. It would blend in with the trees, hide you from the monsters. What do you say, Reed? But I was hardly listening now. The cord around my wrist was starting to tighten, tighten a bit too much. Was the trick going to be done soon? What was taking so long? The important thing is that you stay on the road, he said. I mean it when I say it needs more people like you, young. Excited, not afraid to take risks. It isn't the life for everyone, but it could be for you. It's starting to hurt. I said. Is it? He said absent-mindedly. It's too tight. Almost done. He pulled the string through the final loop. And tied the two ends together once, two, three times. The green globe of my balloon bobbed just beneath my wrist. And its cord cut painfully into my skin. And there we are. Can you finish now? He leaned his face down near mine. It struck me just how unfamiliar this man was and not just his voice. He felt different than other strangers. Bigger. Too focused on me. I wasn't sure I wanted to be here anymore. I just need you to make me a promise first. Some leave in the end. Some buy proper houses. And tear up their license, but I'd prefer if you didn't. I'd prefer you to stay on the road. Can you do that? Take it off. I said, tears welling up in the corners of my vision. I want to go. Promise me you'll stay, Reed. Promise you'll stay with me. I promise. Let me go. He patted my free shoulder and nodded approvingly. Then he backed away from where I was stuck. Step by calculated step. Please, I said through shuddering breaths. Please. I don't want to be here anymore. Mom. Mom. Ah. But I never showed you that magic trick. He paused just a breath before turning the brick corner and smiled one last reassuring time. It's something I assure you that you've never seen before. And then I was alone. At first, I was frozen. In a sort of dazed shock, unable to move, unable to conceive I'd been abandoned here. Because this sort of thing didn't happen. Mom and Dad knew where I was. They had to. They always did. Next, I struggled. Not hard, not violently. It all seemed too unreal for me to break down just yet, but I tried to untie the knot with trembling uncoordinated fingers. When that didn't work, I looked around for a rock to slice it with. And when they were all too far away, I did the last thing I could think of. I'd been trained well in the ways of road manners and the civilized part of me hesitated to open a stranger's car without permission. The more panicked part of me though, that part had no problem. Not if there could be scissors inside. I heaved with my wrist to pull open the handle, and the door swung towards me, bending my arm. I stretched towards the opening and saw what was in the driver's seat. That was the moment I knew I was in danger. That was the moment I broke. The woman had been slashed up the middle, from stomach to neck. Both sides were peeled back at the ribcage to reveal the mess of bloody intestines inside, and what looked like a dozen bite marked every inch of exposed skin. Her legs and arms were bent unnaturally. Her head twisted nearly all the way backwards, and her eyes. There was nothing to report on her eyes. They simply weren't there. I yanked and yelled, clawed and shrieked. I had to get away, had to escape the thing, had to, had to, had to. From there, the details are blurry and disorganized. I'm not sure how long I struggled to get free. But in my six-year-old mind, it was years. In those small moments I aged decades. Nothing left out to attack me, nothing smashed through the window. But my mind was shattering into pieces faster than I could fit them back together. This wasn't real. It couldn't be real. This. Could. Not. Be. Happening. By the time mom found me, I was kneeling with my head to the car. A pool of vomit beneath me, free arm wrapped around my body and trembling. She must have seen what was in the car. Must have cut me out, must have gotten me away. I'm alive, so I know she did, but the specifics of it all fade into the footnotes of the real story. 
Nothing compares to the singular image of that thing in the driver's seat. Nothing ever will. The only other thing I remember, albeit faintly, is my green birthday balloon growing smaller and smaller as my body thump, thump, thumped against mom. It bombed up and down, still tied to the small bluish car, until it disappeared forever. Now my favorite color is yellow. We still live on the road. I'm nearly 16 now. And I've still never gone to a normal high school. There's odd things you see out here. Going from one place to another. Burning houses in the middle of nowhere, wolves with golden eyes that watch you from the side of the road, yet none of them are like him. Mom and Dad don't believe me that I've seen him again. They say it's my imagination projecting six-year-old nightmares onto the faces of hitchhikers or restaurant workers. But I know I have. They don't see the way he watches me back in the grocery store. They don't see the way he winks from the other side of the street. For a couple years. I thought he left me tied to the car to finish me off later. For another few. I guessed he was just trying to torture me with fear. Now, after all these years. I understand. The reason he brought me to his victim then. The reason whenever I track news of the places I see him. There's always fresh bodies, always the day after we leave. He brought me to his victim then and he brings me to his victim now for the same reason. Promise me you'll stay, Reed. He'd said. Promise you'll stay with me. See, he does want me to stay on the road. He wants me to be there as he slices them open. He wants me to be there as he burns them to the ground. Because as many of them as he hunts, and tortures, and kills, he still needs an audience to watch him do it. 